Hello and welcome to Theology on Tap and uh, welcome to my third video on the series called um, No Justice, No Peace. In my first two videos, I wanted to point out the fact that the more we fight for justice, the more chaos that we're going to bring. And, you know, the things that's going on in the world, things that's going on in this country, in the states, uh, within our neighbors, uh, you know that it's true. Because how long have we been fighting for justice? How much money have we put into justice? Uh, to do what is right and to make sure that everything is uh, right and fair. And the more we fight, the more unfair things become. So there is a way out, though. And Jesus basically said that we have to consider all, because he has done it, uh, justified or being made righteous. And that because of that, if we could see each other, one another that way, forgiving one another, live under the grace of God. And that is a way to, you know, peace and hope. And pride and that is something that we need to learn to apply into our lives now how do we do that though so I want to give you a solution today in which I think the Bible is very clear in my opinion uh, excuse me on how to do it um, it comes to us in book of Matthew of course it's the you know three chapters that is the most important chapters in the Bible and that is the Sermon on the Mount and this is when Jesus is talking about his theology this is when he's talking about his ideas and what he is going to do and what we ought to do to follow him, to seek and to knock, right? And to go after him. But as, as the scripture said, people do not. Even the ones that Jesus came to save or to his own people, like the Jews or the church, they have denied Jesus Christ because the more religious um, people become, more division there may be. I mean, just look at the world today. There's a lot of divisions within religion as well. So how are we going to bring all people together in a way so we could bring heaven on earth? And he showed us the way to do it in, in uh, Sermon on the Mount. And there is a verse in there, I believe it's on chapter 5. I think so. Or is it chapter 7? I think it's chapter 7. I'm not sure. Anyway, and when, when, while he's talking with, on the Sermon on the Mount, why he's confronting the religious people and telling people how to live their lives unto the Lord, he said this, resist not evil. And that is very difficult um, thing to think about, right? How do you resist not evil? Because ever since we're young, we were taught to resist evil, right? We we're supposed to fight evil and whatnot. Now, Jesus, of course, is not talking about, you know, uh, countries going to war with one another. We're not talking about global scale kind of a thing. And I think one of the problems that we have in the world today is the fact that we're trying to bring everyone in the world together by force, by some kind of a justice system, um, by certain kind of rules and regulations and laws. And it's going to just bring a lot more chaos. And the people that are making the rules know that it's going to bring chaos, but they continue to do it for some reason. And I still don't understand why. The, the way to change the world is not from the, um, the big scale down. What we got to learn to do is to bring it from the bottom and up. Like our individual self, we have to work on ourselves, work within our own families, right? And then within our neighbors and then on and on and on. And I think that is the best way to spread the good news of how to live a, a you know, good life in peace and freedom that the uh, Bible talks about. And this country was founded upon the whole concept of freedom. But seriously, do we really have freedom when our perception that we see from the TV or the news to the politics and religion is nothing but war, rumors of war and hate and division? You know, it's very, very difficult. So resist not evil. Now, one of the things that I, I think people get, when I was growing up, basically, I was taught that evil is, you, you know, um, Satan um, and all, you know, something terrible. Why not? But if you look at the word evil in Greek, and this is from Strong's uh, definition, Greek dictionary, it says the word evil, evil, uh, the first definition of it is full of labor, full of labor, annoyance, hardship pressed and harassed right if you look at those words it has nothing to do with evil in the sense of somebody that like like scheming and stealing and whatever i mean those are evil as well but it, it, it's more i guess uh smaller than grand scale evil it starts with the little things like full of labor annoyance hardship is is, is in a physical sense ethical sense what not right um somebody who brings toils perils um Things like that. 
something that is bad, basically. And if you have lived your life, you know, there are a lot of people who brings about because of the circumstances in order. It's full, uh, uh, you know, full of labor. You know, there are a lot of people, I'm sure, they annoy you. Uh, people that bring hardship to your life. Um, people who press you and harass you and whatnot. And if you really think about that, I mean, who has the power to do that to us? You know, you could say parents, you could say, you know, teachers, police, um, government. And I mean, whoever is in charge to, to, to make rules that keep harassing us and stuff. Now, this is my third video on the series. I'm going to do maybe two or three more talking about the people that harass, people that is uh, pressing us and putting us into such labor and whatnot. And for some reason, the way they do it, the, the people in charge do it, is to way for us to follow them. I mean, they have such a choke in our lives that we believe them. The way we perceive life, you know, is through their eyes, not through our own eyes. That's what it seems like. Because if you really look at it, there are people who are fighting, protesting for equal rights or uh, social justice kind of a thing or Democrats and Republicans. And, you know, the, there are people in charge or there is news or something in this world through marketing, let's say, that is putting a perception into our minds that things are no good, things are just totally unfair, and the only way to get things justified or only way to get make sure that things are fair is to fight and to fight and fight, and the more we're going to fight, the more people we're going to piss off, and more people who are pissed off and angry and hate comes in and you know, no wonder everybody really do not trust one another anymore and we raise children to do more crimes than, than to study and to become, I don't know, successful. So, I think we have to take this thing very seriously. Do not resist evil. Do not risk people who are, uh, who has the power, who annoy us, bring us hardship, uh, toils and, and perils and, you know, things like that. Do not resist them. And that is something that is very hard to do but if we are believing in the Bible, if we believe these words are to be true, then it is something that, you, that we ought to be able to practice in our lives. Now, I mean, how do you do that? Well, first of all, you have to believe this is the Word of God. This is the, the truth in a sense. This is the way it works. I mean, when I first came to the United States of America, you know, my first hero in the United States was Martin Luther King Jr. back in the 70s, early 70s. He was my hero. And I read his autobiography, uh, biography, and I love the fact that he believed in nonviolence. I mean, he accomplished a lot using nonviolence, meaning do not resist evil, but continue to, you know, live your life in a way that you believe is to be true. To treat people the way you want to be treated, to love your neighbor as you love yourself, right? I mean, I think that's important. That's why Jesus said, if a Roman soldier uh, back in the days, I mean, you got to know that Rome was occupying Jerusalem at the te that time, and the Jews were really upset, and they wanted to have their own state, but they were being ruled by Roman Empire. And so, you know, of course, there's a lot of hostility. And one of the rules that the Romans made is that if a soldier were to be carrying a heavy pack with them, he had the right to pick on a Jewish uh, citizen and tell him, hey, you got to carry this. And by law, a man has to carry it for a mile. And what Jesus said is, that, look, when a man, a soldier asks you to carry things for a mile, because it's under the law, he has to do it, carry another mile, you know, go extra mile. Meaning, don't resist it. Do more to win them over, I guess, you know, to win them over with your favor through grace. Imagine if we could just do that. And that's what he meant when he says, turn the other cheek. Of course, it doesn't mean when some a robber comes in, give him everything you got. Of course, that's not mean that. What it means is that, yeah, in this world, there's going to be thieves and stuff. We got to protect ourselves from as much as we can, obviously. But how do we get rid of these hostilities and whatnot by rules and laws and stuff? It hasn't worked. I'm not saying it's not necessary. But what we got to be doing to one another is to learn to show grace. Right? Every, since, so you know, since since uh, birth, I guess you know, right? from the very beginning, we got to learn to show that we're willing to go the extra mile for one another. I mean, look how great it would work in marriage, right? It's not really how much you are able to compromise with one another. You know, I even I don't like that word compromise in marriage. I think it's something is if you love someone, 
and you want to be treated the way you want to be, uh, you want to treat people the way you want to be treated, then we got to go the extra mile. I'm going to turn the other cheek. Um, you know what I'm saying? And I think, I think that is very important. And the reason why this is so very important is that if we are sound mind in our thoughts of going the extra mile, not resisting those who are putting a lot of pressures into our lives and whatnot, um, but doing more in a sense, is that, you know, we get to keep our sanity. I don't know if you, um, see, I'm terrible with names of things, but I also read a book by Viktor Frankl, I think his name is, about a Jewish man who was in a concentration camp for a few years, right, many years. And he wrote a book about his experience and how he was able to keep his sanity. What he said was that these people who had the authority to take away his life and brought so much hardship in, in, into his life and his his parent his uh, neighbors, all Jews. And what he said was, there's one thing that these Germans could not control, which was his own mind, right? The, the Germans have created an atmosphere where the Jews had no choice, no choice but to perceive that life is over. There's no reason for life. But Victor Frankl has said, no, there is something, our mind, the way we think, the, in here, that's something that Germans could not control. They couldn't torture him and force him to change his, the way he think. Meaning, he was not manipulated. His perception was not changed because of evil. He kept it going. And I think that's such a wonderful thing that that somehow we have control over our own mind and instead of being manipulated to to fight for someone or something else for a cause, you know? I mean, everybody wants to fight for a cause and how many different causes and we end up all fighting against each other, right? Don't just go by a certain kind of perception. Understand here who you are and and... You know, go the extra mile. Do not resist evil. I think that is the key to freedom and peace. I, I really think that. You know, just like I said, imagine how you could apply that into your marriage. And and that there in itself could make a tremendous change in this world. Wouldn't that be nice, right? But if you say you believe in Jesus and whatnot, instead of going through the perception of heaven and hell, what church teaches of fighting evil and morality to all that kind of stuff and all we do is judge one another instead of that kind of stuff you know i know there's certain evil in the world but let's not instead of fighting it you, you know let's overcome it right go the extra mile I, I think that's the way to go and enough of us do that i think that's um it can be accomplished real fast i mean you know i've been driving for lyft for four Four months. Oh, I'm sorry. This is um. You can see my thing in the back there. Lyft. I've been doing that for four months. And one other thing I don't like about Lyft is that you know you don't make that kind. <laughs> you don't make the kind of money. You can't make a living on, uh, doing it unless you're driving 80 hours a week. And who could do that? Um, but and your car is destroyed by then. Um, but one thing I really enjoy about riding uh, driving for Lyft is I get to meet all sorts of people. You know, all different races, different class. Um, and it's a wonderful experience for me. And you know what I realize is that everyday people who, you know, call up on Lyft to go to a friend's house or to a, to work and whatnot, are just wonderful, beautiful people. Just wonderful. You know, um, they tell me their stories and uh, crack some jokes. Some of them have some problems. We share some about that. And a lot of people have some pro uh, have problems. But there's always, you know, hope and goodness that you sense driving people around. It's, it's been a wonderful experience for me. It brings me another way of understanding life because when you just watch TV and listen to the news and stuff, it just seems like we are going to, all of us are going to hell in a handbasket. That's what it seems like. But that's not the truth. I don't think that's the truth. You know, everybody said everybody has evil in, inside of them and, it, and you have to protect ourselves. And I, think, I think what Jesus meant is that there is good in everyone and we need to... Bring that out of people. So instead of fighting, right, go the extra mile. And I think it's kind of sad that these beautiful people that I meet, and I mean, I drove up to a thousand people so far, and all these people, not one problem yet, you know, and everybody's so good and nice and whatnot. And somehow, 
I'm sure within their own group, whatever the group they go into and stuff, the information uh, gets tossed around, the social justice, Democrats, Republicans, and this and that or whatever. And then we just started hating on each other, right? Don't listen to that. I don't think that's good, right? What we should listen to is the word of Jesus. Right? So turn the other cheek, go the extra mile, right? Do not resist evil. Overcome evil with good, right? By being good. I think that'll be awesome. Right. Uh, well, that's the solution, and uh, in my opinion, and I'm going to make maybe two or three more videos on this subject. I'm going to talk about those who has the power to pressure us and whatnot, that take away this, this just common sense in every one of us to do good, right? Uh, those that, want, um, that take away this freedom from us. I want to talk a few about that in the next two, three videos. Hopefully, you join me for that. If you like this video, please like it and share it, and uh, yeah, hope this is a blessing to you. See you next time.